you ready? Green flag, green flag. Hey, we're in Nashville, Tennessee at the Music City Center and it's media day for the NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series Awards Banquet. What a great day. My first guest is dressed appropriately for the Monster Energy Cup Series Awards. It's know. Kurt Busch. Hi, buddy. <coughs> I'm all choked up and nervous here. No, I <coughs> put on my best suit for you. Yeah, I see that. Do you need some water? I, I, I got a uh, little frog in my, my throat here. I got all nervous. Uh, I it, it, it happens. You know, I've been around a long time. I've seen it all. I got a question. Um, that's my job. You were just in a media scrum over there with the, the, the reporters that follow NASCAR week in and week out. What was the best thing you got asked? What What did you like over there? It was cool to tell the story about my little brother and the fact that we came from this nowhere desert town of Las Vegas as far as being on the racing map and the, the path that I had to kind of carve and the, the timing and the luck and the opportunity to be in this sport, uh, you can't take it for granted. And I got to share a story about Kyle and myself and also we're very parallel to a guy like Daniel Hemrick. Came from nowhere, had to work his way up, use that Legends car to, to parlay the chance. And yet he's Rookie of the Year this year, and that's, but he doesn't have a ride for next year. That's how close things can change yes. and happen and go the better way or the tougher route. Isn't it great being the 40-year-old the Kurt Busch and you can look back and appreciate? I'm sure and when you won the championship in 04, you're like, I got this. It, yep. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is easy. I got this. It's going to happen every year. And I'm hearing my little brother starting to lip off now. He's got a second one, right? It's something DW would do, right? He's, well, why can't I get five? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's amazing to circle back around and see it all. But isn't it, I mean, I think it's cool to reflect and think about where you've been, what you've accomplished, how blessed you've been and how fortunate. And we talked last night about your dad. And I just went to see Ford versus Ferrari, and you said your your dad was Ken Miles. He was that guy. He would get in the car and test it. He was that good. He he could feel a car like no other. So with, with I don't my, think a lot of people know that. Yeah, with my accomplishments, my little brother's accomplishments, all of that came from our dad, Tom Bush. I think Tom could outdrive both of us. That's awesome. And the way he felt cars, like Ken Miles in that movie Ford versus Ferrari, my dad would do that for guys at the local track where he was like, okay, I need to help that modified guy get his car and his setup better because then it might create the opportunity for me or my little brother to jump in that car and to race it for that guy. So my dad, Tom Bush, is definitely like Ken Miles in that movie. That's incredible. I feel like that um, my brother was able to pave a road for me to go down. Now, in, when I say that, it was, it was tough. You know, it wasn't a given that I was going to get to go down that road. I had to work hard. But, but he, his, he made my name mean something, and I took advantage of that. How much do you feel like your accomplishments and your getting into NASCAR, like you said, fortunately, how much did Kyle benefit from that? Yeah, it was a path of unknown that we were headed down, right? Uh, for me, my story is similar to, to Daryl on you're just carving your way through. Uh, you're, you're taking no prisoners, you're, you're on the gas so hard, and then, you know, when you were coming along as the little brother, he didn't seem to help you much, right? The path was carved, but he just said, go for it. Right. For me, I had no idea I was going to make it, and I, I tried to leave different avenues open and different bridges there for my little brother to go over, but same time, I had to keep going. I had to keep track of what I was doing, and I'm glad my little brother is carved his own path, made his way to, and yeah, you know, now to, to have three championships among us right. in the Bush family, it's, it's, it's an, been an amazing journey. Uh, we're very blessed to have had this all happen, and you know, to have a Daytona 500 championship with mine, uh, that's, that's where I'm satisfied. I'm fulfilled, but yeah, there's still more to do. There's still so much more that I can give in this multi-year contract with Ganassi. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you're hanging around, too. I, I heard some talk that you were very good when you did TV with us on Fox. Heard some talk you were considering doing that, but now you're signed up to race a couple more years at least, and I'm, I'm thankful for that. You're, you add a, some maturity and, and some energy and just good content to our sport. And I think that's important. The kids that are coming along now, they're teenagers or, or in their early 20s. They can learn a lot watching Kurt Busch now. I appreciate that, Mikey. That's, that's very nice. Um, for me, I, I didn't know I'd have the opportunity to, to keep racing. 
And the sport of NASCAR has given me so much that that's where I thought on the broadcast side of things I can give back. Mm -hmm. And yet the opportunity was Monster Energy, Chevrolet, Ganassi said, no, we want you in the car. And that's, that's where I hope to still continue to get those race wins, have a shot at the championship, but also have that fun as, as that 40-year-old acting like a 20-year-old now at this point in my career. <laughs> and driving like a 20-year-old, uh, take me back to Kentucky. Obviously, I'm from there. I, I watch closely anytime NASCAR goes to Kentucky. What a battle. What a finish to that race. How, how special was that? And, I mean, it had to be great for, for your mom and dad, too, to watch that. It, it's been sweet because I've had to tell the story of beating Ricky Craven by the, or losing, yes. sorry, losing to Ricky Craven by two thousandths of a second for the last 15 years. <laughs> I now get to tell the cool story of beating my little brother in a battle like that, and I won the race this time. That's right. been the best part about telling that story now. And, and, and how hard was that? I mean, you had to trust him, but you also had to try to take advantage of him. I, I had a plan B in case he didn't leave me room coming through turn four. Like I was, I was so committed to being on his right rear quarter that I wanted to side draft him to the start finish line to win it. If he didn't leave me room and he wanted to pinch me, I wasn't going to lift. Yes. We were both going to wreck and we were both going to be in the grass. And then I was going to be out of my car quicker and duke it out with him. That was my, that was my plan B. And it, it, it all worked out because there was a brother moment. There was a connection of he didn't pinch me off because I think it's that we're teammates in life. Yeah. But I, and I also think it's because he was thinking, uh, I don't think Kurt's going to let off. He knew I wasn't going to let off. That's for darn sure. That, and that's that racer sense about him. But I'll tell you this, that, that if you had have seen us at the wrestling match on, on Monday night, he <laughs> took down our truth So you might have had your hands full out there in that grass in Kentucky. I was going to leave my helmet on, that's for sure. <laughs> well, man, I really appreciate you coming, Bob. Uh, we have a parting question we're going to ask everyone. Okay. Was Die Hard a Christmas movie or not? Was Die Hard a Christmas? Oh, yes. Oh, you could feel the sentimental value of Christmas in Bruce Willis. Yes. Oh, yeah. Even though it was released in July, you feel good about, like, because it's, it's set around Christmas. Yeah. I thought it was a Christmas movie. And then there's the famous quote in there. yippee ki yay mother. <laughs> ah, that's my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to stay live throughout the whole day here, talking to all you guys. Thanks for being my first guest. Absolutely. Appreciate you Did stopping you guys by. bleep that out, or did I stop just in no, time? No, you, you bleeped yourself. Good. All right. Which I, is highly unusual. Well, well, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> How many times do you wish you could go back and bleep yourself? Radio <laughs> sweetheart champion right here. <laughs> yeah. you, you have some great quotes. In radio. And, and if you're watching at home and listening uh, via all the Fox Sports apps we're on today, Ask Mikey is our hashtag. Maybe you can ask Mikey what Kurt's most favorite radio sweetheart moment was, and we can recap and I'll find him and get you that answer. Unless you just want to tell us now. You got one you liked? My favorite one was when I was mad at NASCAR, Daytona, July 2003. I had crash damage. I was still on the lead lap, or I would, maybe I was a lap down. And they held me in the pits for pulling up to pit. And I'm like, why are you guys holding me? I, I'm just fixing crash damage. And so I, I had some nice salty words for NASCAR during that. That's my favorite one. Oh, your salty words. Well, yes, yeah, salty. They, yeah, that was a key word you that, picked that up on is, that. I, I'm connected with you now. They said, I, hold them another lap. I'm like, and then they're like, hold them more laps. I'm like, and I think I was five laps down just because of my cool language. Because you couldn't get it all together in time it, to, to get out of the pit. It was hot. It was salty down there in Daytona. <laughs> hey, I, I'll tell you a quick story about my brother. He... He went into the NASCAR trailer one day at Martinsville, and Mr. France was sitting there, and he, he told Mr. France it was ridiculous. I couldn't work fans everywhere, people on his car. He couldn't work on his car. You need, to, you need to fix this. This is ridiculous. First pit stop, hold the 11 car pitting outside of his box. We didn't even know we had boxes back then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Daryl's like, I think I understand this one. They're working on it for him. <laughs> right on, man. Well, have a good day. Yeah, I appreciate Enjoy. you. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming by. Cheers, guys. That was Kurt Busch. Always fun to talk to Kurt. NASCAR champion 2003. Four. 2004. Damn it, I had it right in practice. NASCAR champion 2004. Looking for a, another championship in 2020. 2020. How about that? 2020 is coming up, and the NASCAR season will crank into gear come February. But the racers, I think the racers basically feel pretty much like this is their last couple of days of work. And then 
it's relaxation. Uh, all the drivers of top 16 are here with the exception of Brad Kozlowski. Brad's not here this week due to he and his lovely wife had a beautiful baby. Hi, Denny. How you doing? Appreciate you stopping by. Mm -hmm. um, I asked uh, Kurt this a minute ago, and I, I'm just interested because I used to be, you know, that guy over there with all those people. What What was the favorite thing you got asked? What What sparked a memory for you, or something that you you heard one of the reporters say that that made you think, yeah, that's pretty cool, and and then you elaborated on it. I I would say you know the easiest thing that comes to mind is kind of they ask, well, you know, does Michael Jordan give you advice? you know, after Homestead and, you know, in 2014 when he came and then 2019 when he came. And I always said, no, he really doesn't give, you know, much advice, maybe a little bit after 2014. But he um, he's just more inquisitive. Like, I, I must have got five or six questions from him after the race in Homestead about, so why was the tape so big? Why, you know? Did did we know that there was a chance it was going to go wrong? It felt, he says, it looked like to me your car was getting stronger, was it? You know, he's very inquisitive because he is a race fan. I mean, um, I, I we went down there and we golfed uh, with him and his buddies, and, and they were like, you know, MJ makes us sit down with him every Sunday and watch the race. He just, he watches every single week. So uh, he's more of a, just inquisitive race fan when he goes. That's pretty awesome, and, and so... <clears throat> As a racer, we know putting tape uh, is something that, that can make your car go faster and it can make yeah. it handle better. And it's something that happens regularly. As you look back on it, uh, how did it go wrong? <laughs> uh, I, I want to sound like, I know I sound yeah. like Michael, but I want to, for the fans that would think, I mean, how, how, yeah. that, how could that go wrong? Well, it was six by 10. Um, so it, it six usually, inches, 10 inches. Yeah. Yeah, we're not talking centimeters here, which is <laughs> normally what you think about when you're putting on tape. Yes, it it was uh it was large, and I think that um, you know Chris Gabehart actually texted me a week and a half after Homestead says, so why haven't you asked me about the tape? Like, why haven't you asked more questions about why I did it or how did it mess? Up? You know, he said, and I said, you know, I just there's nothing we can do about it now. Like I, I you know it's just probably going to make me feel worse. <laughs> so I was like, I ah, just let it go. You know, I, that's one thing I feel like I've been able to do this year is just let things go. But I think the goal behind it is, um, we had tape, we were applying during the race and it was falling off and he was trying to fix those patches that had, had gone missing along with add an aggressive amount with it. Mm -hmm. So, um, he, I'm sure him and the the computers up there and all the engineers had came up with the size that it was going to take. Unfortunately, where kind of where it was applied was was in an area that covered up most to all of the front end. <laughs> so it how, didn't it didn't quite work. How quickly did you did you know that uh, this is not good? Oh, I mean, I went out and it took two laps before my all my temperatures were blinking red at me. Wow! And, and I'm looking. I'm thinking, what's going on here? Like, I I don't understand. Uh, and, he, and he's, you know, I guess he told me that he, he applied it, and I saw we were spitting out water. And I, I knew, like, my temperatures, once they reach an unheard of temperature, it just goes blank to 100 degrees. And I was like, well, everything's 100 degrees. Like, and this is beyond, this is not even in the realm. The fact, I cannot believe the motor stayed together. Mm -hmm. I, the temperatures that I saw after the race, it's just incredible that it stayed together. But I just knew that there's no way if I stayed on track. You know, you always live to play another play, right, to race another lap. And I knew, you know, bite the bullet, try to make my lap back up, which we did on track, uh, and hope a caution falls. Right. You know, we got the number one pit stall. Maybe we gained some spots there. But I knew staying on track was just going to end with a, a DNF. Well, just think about the maturity since 14. There was an early crash then. You know, you, you, you didn't get a chance to race for the championship because of something, you know, maybe you did. And then you put yourself in a position to win the championship and then have it taken away. Yeah. How will that prepare you for the 2020 season? Do you think you're just at that level of maturity? You're like, shit's going to happen. Well, I think of the three real good legitimate shots, 2010, 
we're, we're leading by 50 some points over Jimmy under that points format. Um, we're leading all day, led 190 of the 300, and um, he's running about 10th. We're, we're, we're essentially in a spot where our foot's on his throat. We need to just start the engine homestead if the race ends like it was playing out. Um, I get a call over the radio, we need to pit again, because something, you know, with, with the carburetor, it, it was, it used all the fuel. Like, we were going to run out. I don't, you know, I don't know if we got it full or not. I'm not sure. I think we may have not got it full. So I got to come back in. I finished 14th. He finishes somewhere better. Now we're down to 15 points. So instead of foot on the throat, it's done. Like, I went out there and, and I performed well. I, like, second to last race, this is our championship. My reaction from, from that, from Phoenix, is what caused us to not have a chance when we got to Homestead. Mm-hmm. I was just zoned out. I was so angry with us not executing in, in Phoenix and ending the championship right there that uh, I didn't do a good job when I got to Homestead. 2014, I just I was leading the race. Nine to go, and cars five, six laps down, crash each other. Um, Kevin Harvick comes in, takes tires, passes us, and yeah. it's over. So I, I, this year, I mean, I'm stone's throw or less to Kyle and come in, we overheat the engine. <laughs> so it's like I feel like I'm doing all that I can. Um, it just hasn't worked out yet. Right. But if I keep knocking on the door, I'm very confident that I, my opportunity and my time will come. Uh, if it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I'm going to be happy with the outcome because I know that over the last 10 years, I've done all I could to, to try to get it. No doubt. And the numbers don't lie. A couple of Daytona 500s, uh, 30-some wins. It's been impressive to watch. And I, I just appreciate your spirit, how you go there and roll up your sleeves and fight. And then it says a lot about you not calling your team saying, why would you all do that? I mean, yeah, that that's just – things just happen, I guess. I, I've come to realize that – there's nothing that Chris Scapehart does that doesn't have a reason behind it. I mean, I've trusted him to, you know, we have a very quarterback head coach relationship. When he gives me the play, I may not agree with it, but you're going to run it, but I'm going to run his play. That's what he says. I'm going to do it. I'm going to execute it. If you want me to turn around and put casters on the roof and (laughs) run a couple laps in practice, okay, no problem. Let's go. So, he has a reason behind everything, and, and and I knew that although an aggressive and didn't execute well move at the end of Homestead, there was a reason behind it. Mm-hmm. All right, before I let you go, uh, Die Hard, Christmas movie or not? What is it? Die Hard? No. I mean, no, not in my opinion. Yeah. It was it was released in July, and it was it was based on Christmas, but not a Christmas movie. No, I I it's only set around Christmas. I only consider Christmas movies happy movies. Yes. Just because something happens around Christmas time in a movie, I would not consider it a Christmas movie. Couldn't agree more. It, Pre- it, Christmas movies are uh, PG or lower. I agree. Elf. Great movie. Maybe the best. Yeah. All right. Syrup on everything. <laughs> <laughs> I love sugar. Yeah. It's one of the four food groups. <laughs> love it. Hey, thanks for coming by, buddy. Thank you. Good to see you. Look forward to golfing when your lab- labrium is better. Did Rick Hendrick ever start a cup race as a driver? Oh. No. Yes. He did. 1987. Were you like 10 years into your cup run by then? or what? <laughs> I was a, It was my sophomore season, <laughs> and Rick drove the number 25. I think it was Folger's coffee car. Really? And he qualified 21st and finished. Was he, was he uh, a lot like Tim Richmond? No. No? Uh, I'd say almost the opposite of Tim <laughs> Richmond at that time even. But Dang. it was uh, – I just Do you wondered. remember it? Yes. Yeah. I was remember it like it. a big deal. Was he a big deal then? I guess was he an owner? Yeah. They had won in 84. And he was a sports car racer, and really? so he ran Riverside in 87. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. And I, I remember it because he had a really, really fast car on the straightaway. <laughs> <laughs> Everything Hendrick Motorsports had, they brought it. Yeah. And so um, it's like Austin Dillon getting the pole at Daytona or Danica, <laughs> like, like that kind of fast. Like something you expected. That, something that you didn't see. I mean, you saw it coming. But, um, but so, so in your media scrum, what, what was the favorite question that was asked? 
I asked Denny that, and he said people want to know about Michael Jordan and, and how he was about the championship run. I think that was good insight. Nothing as cool as that. No, I mean, that's that, that was pretty cool seeing him there. Yeah, um, yeah, it was. It was cool. I didn't see him there, but I saw pictures of him. Yeah, me too. Um, you didn't go over to Denny's bus and see him? No, I, Denny had a lot of lot of stuff going on, so I didn't want to bug him. But, right. uh, uh, 48 questions. I got a lot of them. Um, and oh, then, people wanting to put you over there? Yeah. And then uh, a lot of dirt, a lot of dirt stuff, you know, cause I've been racing the dirt stuff right. and had a good run the last couple weeks. So, um, talked a lot about, a lot about the dirt racing I've been doing. How was Turkey night? Was it, did Rough. you know, was it? <laughs> yeah, it had rained. Uh, let's see it. So it rained out Thursday. So it rained all day Thursday and then the track was really soft. They somehow got it worked in where you could make some laps and then it rained again middle of the night so the track was just a swamp but uh they got it in but it was like a motocross track it was the roughest thing i've ever been on but uh thankfully we got it in that's a midget race right yep now help me to to tell the folks at home you told me that you didn't think anybody was really better than you on better than you in a midget except maybe bell's bell's real close bell's better than me in well I thought he was better than me in a midget. He probably is still better than me in a midget, but I think I'm a little bit better in a wing sprint car. Yeah, and and what's your favorite, a midget or a wing sprint car? Uh, I like wing sprint cars. Um, wing 410 sprint cars, you're the best probably out of everything I, I drive um, just because the power is unbelievable. Um, what's the best track to drive a winged 410 on? Ooh, um, I mean, it varies for everybody, but um, Eldora's a good one, Knoxville. Um, Are you nearly wide open in a winged 410 at Eldora? Early in the night, if the tracks if the tracks got grip, yeah, you'd be you'd be wide open. But as it gets slick, I mean, you you're never never wide open. You're you just kind of run three quarter to you know half throttle or less. Uh, I got trying t- to limit your wheel spin. I got to tell you, watching Kenny Wallace and Kenny Schrader race those IMCA yeah. dirt modifieds. And they would come down the back straightaway and set it and let off and then just kill it. it. Yeah. And I'm I'm thinking, that's crazy yeah. because I've never done that. It, yeah, you it, wouldn't do, well, you wouldn't want to do that in a sprint car. You'd get you'd get the the car handling all goofy. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, those modifieds and late. Do you models, ever run look, one of those? I haven't, but they look they look fun to drive for sure. I'd like to. I'd wish I wish Tony and Roger Slack would bring back the Prelude to the Dream. Yeah, and race those. Yeah. Did you ever do that? No. No. No, I, I didn't get invited. I don't remember where I was or why, but I had my favorite memory. One of my favorite memories of the 2019 season was your win in the all-star race. I sat on a bus or stood on a bus down in the corner with my daughter and a bunch of her high school friends, all from South Charlotte. They went to high school with William. Okay. So every time William would go by, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that move off turn two down the back, I think you went – I don't know. Like sixth or eighth or something. To, to first. Yeah. In one straight. A lot of help from Harvick. The <laughs> big the push. Yeah. So that ha- was that your favorite moment of the 2019 season? I mean, can you say that? Uh, Yeah, I mean, I would definitely say it ranks up there. I mean, that's one of the biggest wins of my career. So, um, and it was and then, so dramatic. Yeah, just, I didn't expect to win, you know. I, I, didn't, I didn't. On that restart, I think we lined up. You, know, I guess we had a restart. I restarted like, f- I want to say 14th ish. And I was like, yeah, there's no way. You know, if I get a top five in the All-Star race, you know, that'd be cool. Um, but I got a good restart and got to wherever I was, sixth or eighth. And then we had a quick caution. And then still, I was like, okay, you know, well, now I can definitely finish top five. Um, and then, um, yeah, like the seas parted in one and two. And I got to the middle and Harvick was shoving me. And we had a massive run down the back stretch where they, you know, it was such a big run, they couldn't block. And, yeah, I got right to lead and into three, and um, but still after that, you know, I had to fight off Harvick and Kyle Busch. But um, yeah, it was just unexpected, you know. I, I I didn't expect to win that, so it was made it even cooler. I think it's the first I said, and I think I'm right. I think it's the first ever four wide pass for a win in NASCAR. <laughs> now you remember the tandem thing at Talladega once? They were four oh, yeah. wide, but that was awesome. the guy that passed the 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 guy that was four wide, he he held. Almost got there. Yeah, yeah. but you. Why well, wasn't really like a pass to the win? It was a pass like for, for the, the lead, win. I guess, which which was cool. But yeah, that that was a, uh, gosh, that was a wild race. Yeah, a lot of fun to watch. Thanks for coming by. Yep, thanks. I, Enjoy uh, it. Appreciate you. Um, Sorry, I broke your mic. That's all right. Where are you going next, by the way? Not uh, not here. Like, where are you going to race? Or are you going to? 
from we were, we're, I'll race in uh, I'll race in the Dome in at Gateway in uh-huh. a couple weeks, and then from there I go straight to New Zealand for two and a half weeks to race. And that's winged in New Zealand and a no, mi- it's all mostly midget, all midget stuff really in the off season until right before Daytona when we go to Volusia mm-hmm. and uh, East Bay will be winged four four ten sprint cars. Did you see Kyle Busch win the wrestling championship Monday night? Hey, yeah, there was a referee too. He, <laughs> A little, little quick on the, little quick on the tap. I that think, guy's but tough, though. I got to yeah. get Kyle out of there. We might have <laughs> yeah. lost him. <laughs> yeah, no, that was funny. All right. Well, thanks for coming by, man. Yep. Thanks. All right. We'll get that mic fixed. Don't worry about it. <laughs> what have you been doing since uh, Miami? Uh, hanging out uh, a little bit at the house and family time. You know, all that good stuff with uh, Thanksgiving and everything like that, which is, which is nice. But um, and then got here, so just nice downtime. Really. What, what about the? I loved it, and I'm sure you enjoyed it too. The history lesson via Mike Curb yesterday. <laughs> yeah, uh, big history lesson. I learned a lot about uh, Mike Curb. Um, he's been, I mean, around the sport forever, right? Yes, so, and still is. And he, and yeah, still is with Door Sport. And uh, nice guy. Never met him before, but I, I got the pleasure to do that yesterday. And uh, he gave a long speech yeah. before Tim Duggar went on there. Yeah, so. and and I loved it because I, you know, I lived all that. It was a little bit before your time. But the thing I love most is he gave our, he's given our buddy Tim Duggar the, yeah. the platform to, to sell his music. And mm-hmm. no one loves what they do more than Duggar. And he, he sang three of his songs, and yeah. they they were great. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, for everyone not uh, not familiar with Tim Duggar, he has a well, some new singles out right now. He's got three new singles and uh, got an album coming out soon, which is uh, which is good. But yeah, he played a few of them for us yesterday, and I think he's uh, there's no bigger NASCAR fan and, and better musician and nicer guy than him. And uh, it's been cool to get to know him. You know what's great about him is whether you go to Eldora or to 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 Bristol or wherever you go, he's the kind of guy that NASCAR fans would love. And yeah. so I've always told the the promoters and track presidents just have a Duggar concert mm-hmm. uh, you know anywhere we can anytime we can yeah I know he's played a lot um, of NASCAR weekends and uh, he's a, just a NASCAR fan who happens to play music and he does a great job at it so uh, he's, a, he's definitely a good guy pretty is, happy for him is that your genre genre uh, country or are you more of a rock and roller I kind of I don't know I vary um, I love country music uh, I'm a metalhead also I see you and Bubba yeah. at a lot of concerts yeah so that big differences between the two genres of, of music but um yeah I, I go you know and then 90s rock and roll i was kind of raised on that but, yeah so there's a few i like very uh you know i dislike very little yes. amount of music well i'll I tell like you some something i love is getting to see your dad and i got to see him uh was he at eldora yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And he also went to uh, Orange County Fair Speedway up there with Friesen races. And mm-hmm. it just it reminded me of a trip I took to Canada to race a, a late model. And your dad was up there racing a, a wing sprinter. And yeah. he's my age or older. And, yeah. and he said, I just go for it. Yeah. Man. You got to go. Yeah. And that's, yeah. Yeah, you hear that, right? Yeah. That's what he loves doing. That's what he did before NASCAR. And um, he's going to, he raced a lot. He raced more than me this year. And um, is that on the place? Sk- and, no, he's going to cut it back a little bit next year. Uh, he's going to cut it down a little bit and um, race up at his track a lot at Sharon. Uh, do my his dad's memorial race up there, try to win that one. And um, but he's he's full throttle man, and he's, he still comes to half mine. Yeah, so he's loves racing, loves being around it. And uh, I don't know what he's going to do now with his free time if he's not racing all the time. He'll be he'll be figuring something out. But. <laughs> I've heard a, a lot of questions about the pipeline to NASCAR. You obviously, me, the same. Our families. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you feel about the youth movement? Where, where's everybody coming from? Uh, and I ask you that, and let me just say this. William did it differently than we've ever seen before, and very talented, awesome yeah. racer, but it's just different. Yeah. It, it, do you see it yeah. changing going forward? Yeah, I mean, there's various ways. You see families, like you talked about, get into it. I mean, you know, we grew up at the racetrack, and just what it was. It was part of what you did on the weekends and um, when you go to races. But, um, yeah, there's multiple ways. You know, there's people in – in the sport that didn't have any family ties to it you know and they just decided they wanted to race and they have been very successful and made their way all the way up and then like you said William Byron coming the way he did starting pretty late you know when he started it was really late and he did a lot of the online stuff um, and it got him you know to the cup level and he did great and won him a championship and uh, and the Xfinity side but yeah I, I, just, I do see different ways to kind of get into the sport um, and they're all special you just have to be passionate about it and hope you get a good shot yeah. so 
Are you? On, so, they're taking you. Are you an online guy? Uh, racing? Um, um, every now and then. Yeah. Every now and then I'll, I'll jump on. Ford's got a great simulator, but um, not all the time. But some. Well, thanks for having me, Mikey. Yeah, I appreciate, appreciate you it. stopping yeah. by. Yeah. How are you? Doing great. Yourself? Good. Did you see my friend John Hondros last night at any point? I did. Yeah. And it was it was late too. It was late. Yeah, I saw him that. this morning. He had this look on his face like he had been out late. And yeah. and then you know what he did? He quickly told me he said Martin was with me. So <laughs> it, you know that made it okay, right? <laughs> I guess in his mind. <laughs> yeah, what a what a what an amazing season you had, and I know uh, obviously uh, the shock of that pit stop and what happened. Uh, have how do you deal with it? I mean, I asked yeah. you that, and I want to preface it with one thing: when we raced, when you drove for me, we had a lot of stuff that didn't go right, you know, and and it was hard for you to 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 come to. I think it was hard for you at that time to deal with it because yeah. it wasn't your fault. And you're like, what, what's our problem? And, and with Cole, it just seems like everything's gone right. And, and I just wondered when that went so bad, like what, what, where, where were you at mentally? Um, at the moment, you know, in the moment I was just, all right, it happened. We can't do nothing about it. How do I, how do I overcome this? You know, um, I guess the old me probably would have screamed and yelled on the radio and kicked and screamed and, but, I've learned a lot over the years about how to deal with those types of things. And I was just like, Hey, it is what it is. I can't change it. Got to overcome it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think short of, short of the, just the damage it did to the splitter on our car, I think we did overcome it. You know I mean? We, we were able to get back in the lead lap. We were able to get back towards the front of the pack. Obviously second isn't what we wanted, but, I think in the end, end result, big picture, it was a hell of a recovery. Yes. Um, but it still hurts, you know. It hurts like hell right now. I mean, it's like, but you can't change it. So right. So what do you do? Yeah, I talked to Denny about his tape issue, and he's like he never really called Gabe Hart and asked him about it. He's like, you know, yeah. they, they tried, and obviously yeah. they, they screwed up. And a lot of the, the fans that will come up to me that know I know Denny and say, well, how can they do that? I said, well, it's pretty simple, you know. You, you have engineers, you have computers, you have a plan. You're going to put the tape on, and the engine's going to be fine. Well, obviously, somewhere in that plan, it, it got screwed up. And another question is, is yeah. you know, how do they put the wrong tires on the wrong side? I said, well, the guy changed them has no idea. He's just hitting nuts and going to town. So it's just. Yeah, I don't, I don't still really don't know how it happened. I haven't even asked. It's that's, like. That's awesome. What do you, I mean, I don't even really want to talk or think about it. <laughs> thanks for bringing it up. Yeah, I no, I'm just kidding. It. But thanks for stopping by. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, see you later. But um, you know, I, I try to let those things, like let Cole figure those things out, and, and it's crazy how it works. You'd think, honestly, the way they lay the tires out in the pits, and you know how the tire guys, the crew chief's calling out air pressure adjustments like at the at the last second. Yes. You're almost hitting pit road, and he's like, take two or three tenths out of the right front, blah 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 blah. Like, how does it not happen more? Yes. You know, that's kind of my question, but it's amazing that it doesn't. Those guys are incredible what they do, and, you know, they're human, right? So, I mean, the guy just grabbed, literally grabbed the wrong t- – I don't know if they were set out different than normal or he just, in a panic, grabbed the wrong one. I don't know what happened. Um, I just know it doesn't happen very often because those guys are really good at what they do. Yeah. Well, it's been fun seeing you and Cole. I, I get to do a little bit of TV with Cole. and He's, he's a dry guy, but he, <laughs> he's a fun cat. He's a great guy. A lot of fun. I love working with him. Um, he's just, he's tenacious. You know, he's just, uh, man, he'll work. He'll outwork anyone if that's what it takes. He'll do whatever it takes to win. And those are the kind of guys you just, you love to have on your side. You know, he pushes me to be better all the time. Um, we have fun together, but we also keep each other accountable. You know, kind of like he's that same way with the team. We have a great bunch of guys, great camaraderie. Um, but we're not afraid to you know, get reprimanded or get yelled at to be better, to get pushed to be better. It's just a, it's a fun kind of atmosphere to work in, you know, work hard, play hard, kind of like my style. So it's, um, it's been awesome to work with him and he's a great leader. Do, do you remember when you first thought this cat's special? Like he's, he's better than, than most. You know, I knew in our first year together, 2014, I felt like he was smart and he knew what he was talking about, but we struggled so bad. It was hard to just see exactly how good he really was. And then, um, you know, in 15, once we started, you know, get, things started clicking and our cars started making sense and we had something to build off of, then you could just see, like, the decisions he made and the way he approached things, that it was different. It was different than anyone I'd ever worked with. And, and, and we started getting those results. And, and he's just, he's meticulous. He can put things together and pick things out that some people overlook. 
even me sometimes driving wise and, and, and talking to him about the car, he can somehow pulls more out of me almost than I feel like sometimes I even have. And in this sport, at this level, this competition, that's, you have to have that, you know? So I've been lucky to have him and, uh, yeah, I mean, he's just, he's freaking amazing. Yeah. <laughs> he's awesome. Yeah. I remember when we worked together and Rodney Childers was there and he would look at a car and he'd say the splitter's a quarter inch too bit, too high. And, you know, he could see, yeah. see things that, that I never had crew chiefs say to me. Right. And I was so envious. I'm like, damn. And now yeah. you have that. That's awesome. Yeah. And I mean, you look at a guy like Rodney and you look where he's at and the success he's had. Um, that's part of that, right? He's, he's smart. He's yeah. good. He has a good driver. He has good equipment. He has a good team. You got to have everything. And, you know, fortunately for me, I've had that for a while now. It's been, uh, I've been very lucky. Uh, it's been amazing. I, I pinch myself every time I show up to the racetrack because I know we can win. Yeah. And that's, that's the best feeling. I mean, in racing is when you show up and you know, you can win. Yeah. It's a, it's a great feeling to wake up on Sunday morning. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Best thing well, in the world. Thanks for coming by. Your people are like this Pulling. is we're a sideshow and your people are okay. looking at me like what are you doing well it's a pretty good sideshow thanks well, for having me i appreciate really you coming by you. what's your favorite christmas movie before you leave oh uh, Christ, christmas vacation man oh love it love yeah, it yeah i love that that movie it's i mean it's classic we watch it every year like five times so <laughs> well thank you so much for <laughs> coming by my have thank a you, merry, buddy. Christmas merry christmas and congratulations on another great year thank you yeah have fun. walking in now from emporia kansas Driver of the number 14 <laughs> Ford for Stuart Haas Racing. Every time I hear you say that. I almost say Virginia. No, no, no. Don't, don't touch the microphone, by the way. Ford's got it rigged where it's going to fall over. but I won't touch it. Yeah. But back to my story in you in Emporia, Kansas. You remember when we lost you in Emporia there for the <laughs> void? Only to find you at the nail salon yes. with about four of those girls <laughs> working on you getting a manicure and pedicure. Funniest thing I've ever seen. That's where we found him. Yeah. That happened. We went to Emporia to sign autographs at your new <laughs> Toyota you dealership. You and Brother Daryl. Yeah, me and Brother Daryl. And I got there and it wasn't my turn to sign yet. And there ain't much going on in Emporia in the middle of the day, I can tell you that. And I found a nice place to get my nails done. And the cool thing about it, I was the only dude in there, and I had one on each corner, one on one on each one of my feet and legs and hands and stuff, and I loved it. And I enjoyed visiting your your town and seeing a little bit about what you've done there, the the community center. That's beautiful. Yeah, thanks, man. It was a lot of fun. It's neat to have both Walter brothers there, and uh, you know, um, it was a lot of fun. But as soon as I heard you say that, I was like, <laughs> it came right into my mind. Well, What's uh, up, man? Hey, we're in Nashville. I know it. Do you remember great? the sound and speed? You used to come. Yes, to those. certainly. God, those were so fun. Great. Look at us. We're back. I know it, and I heard your buddy Blake Shelton's going to play today, which will be, oh, it's going to hurt so bad uh, tomorrow, right? Do you know? Do you have those people in your life? I just every time you're around, you're like, oh, you almost cringe. And you know, it's it's funny when you know, you know it and you still it can't like, wait. Don't help. Can't wait to do it. <laughs> I can't wait to feel terrible. <laughs> we're, he's singing that old red, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. We're going. Uh, you know, to his bar, and everybody's going to have a good time. It's going to be fun. Gosh, yeah. it's going to be fun. Look forward to it. Tell me this. What, uh, I know media, you've done it for 100 years. Uh, what's something that somebody asked you today or a story you got to tell that made made you smile? Like you said, you, somebody Sound asked. Sound speed. Um, we we were, got to talking about that. Um, Nashville. God, I remember when I wrecked the field and you won. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. That sucked. It was awesome. That was a terrible experience. Um, I come it, off turn two, and there were five cars ahead of me. And, I, and it started smoking. I drove into the smoke, and I came out the other side. And in victory lane. There wasn't nobody ahead of me. <laughs> I'm, like, driving toward the checkered thinking. They will never forget that. Did I win? I think I won. You did. You did. Um, but, yeah, just so many good memories of coming over here back then, you know, and, and um, just going down there and, and, you know, that event last night at the Ryman, you know, obviously um, – I remember going there and, and a lot of good experiences there, but just being down there, you know, on, on Broadway and, and um, going to all those places, you know, I mean, how many, it's so, it's, it's a perfect plan, strategic, yes. where how those hotels are so close to that street. And they're building them more every day. Oh, man. If it's a block to the hotel, you're going to walk four blocks getting there. Yeah. How, how much <laughs> fun would you have racing at the fairgrounds again? Oh, it would be awesome. I mean, that's been the talk of the town, obviously um all day long here in media day but you know it just 
just like that sound and speed stuff i think country music and and uh, racing has always you know went hand in hand i mean i can't tell you how many country songs we've all heard over the years with with racing you know roots and, and racing lyrics uh, three in the back window to talladega you know what i yeah. mean i mean it's just um it's always been there just right. you know and and, and again you kind of look at our sport you know i was telling a guy over there um it reminds me of country mm-hmm. and country music in their industry right now i mean there's so many people you hear fans but i i just how the hell can i relate to this kid you know you're like well, the same way you relate had to, they said the same thing you know when i when i see george Strait, everybody lights up man he's a legend right he's the cowboy hat wearing cowboy boot you know wearing guy that rolls in and sings those old slow country songs that we all love but the then stool. all of a sudden my, you know we're all friends with jay going too yeah. he's country you know and i mean he don't have any country you know cowboy boots on you know, look at our sport you've got you know, you still got Richard Petty sitting over there signing autographs with a cowboy hat on and them snakeskin boots. But you also got a William Byron rolling in town with, with vans on and, and a T-shirt. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just it's there's a lot of parallels, a lot of similarities with, with both industries. And I think uh, people talk about the pipeline and William Byron reset things. You know, <laughs> he ra- he learned how to race on a computer and, 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 and started driving physically late oh, yeah. and, and was able to, to compete with you guys. Same thing. You know, we're sitting here talking about – you know, racing in Nashville. I mean, look at country music. I mean, used to be a, you know, an old boy in a garage, their parents' garage, and next thing you know, the old found another old boy to play drums, and then a guy <laughs> learns how to play the electric, and I'll be damned, we got a band, you we know. got something going on. That don't happen anymore. Now they all roll into town and, and um, you know, have record labels and everything else make it for them. No different than our sport. We had a, you throw in country music and NASCAR. We had WWE in town Monday night. Yeah. Went over there and did did a, a little, a, a referee for a Kyle Busch. I saw it. But it's, it's that's another world. They're, hey, did you make fun? I haven't seen Kyle yet. But he did a good job hiding it, but he almost busted his butt. Running off? He almost yeah. fell down. In front if you had to bet who's How going? many people were there? Uh, 40, 50,000? No, nah, I'd say 20, 20, 20, maybe. They almost saw our champion fall on a and If you had butt. to bet which one of us would have fallen down, you'd have picked me, right? 100%. <laughs> I watched him almost fall, and I thought, damn, I thought I would do that. Uh, but WWE is a big part of Fox, and, and that's oh, another yeah. great uh, audience that – a crossover, you know, that we can use, uh, do absolutely. more promotions with them. No, absolutely. We just did one, man. I just did, uh, you know, for the banquet. Uh, who was it? Shane. Yeah. My God. That Big geez. cat. I was. I didn't even know his name because I couldn't focus. <laughs> All I could focus on his arms. I'm like, I didn't hear anything come out of his mouth. I was just watching his hands and see if he was going to beat the hell out of me. There. And where he was going to throw me. There. You know, that's the thing. Those guys, forget, like, he can hurt you. He'll just throw you. Right. Like, he don't need to hit right. you. I'll just throw you out of the back. Like, you're going to go for a ride. But have that uh, correlation with him. And, and, you know, they're showmen. That yes. guy, obviously, his physique and everything else is just through the roof. Um, but the way, you know, he carried an interview and, and just so comfortable and smooth and everything else. I mean, he's – that guy's he's good on both sides of the ball. Our truth told me to – he said, when you pull your – when you reveal the reveal it slow sell it sell it yeah. and while i'm doing it he's staring at me and i'm going oh, this is weird <laughs> but then we took him down so i hope you were proud of us nascar racers no it was good it was it was awkward but it was good <laughs> all right i've heard that before well i was gonna say <laughs> what I've is never Drew, heard, you talking about awkward? i've never experienced awkward with with michael before ever well uh, i don't know Let's think about that for a minute. Drew. It's fun to do awkward things. It's fun to be awkward. It's Yeah, I'm good at it. Drew is over there doing this, which Wrap is it up. making me feel uncomfortable because when did he get in charge? Don't you run He's, Clint Boyer, Inc.? He was... He was in charge of you before, too, so <laughs> as you can tell, he's still not in charge. <laughs> What'd you do, Drew? You were, spot, you were spotting at Daytona, and your ma said, or grandma said, Drew's driving at Daytona. Yeah. <laughs> No way. <laughs> yeah, they got confused. He was on the pole. He was my PR guy in 95. You know, there was been and a And he said one time, could you please pull over the van? <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> she threw up on you. <laughs> and you know how polite he is? They said they were driving down the road like could 2 in the morning. Could you please pull over the van? <laughs> got him cleaned up. Appreciate you. Clint Boyer.
<laughs> How you been? You doing all right, you? What have you been doing since uh, Miami? A lot of stuff outdoors, um, spending time with the kids, and uh, a little bit of hunting. Um, my dad came up, spent some time with him, went to an old car show, Ray Everham's car show. In, in uh, Mooresville. In, in Davidson, but yeah. Um, cut down a Christmas tree, decorated it with kids. It's fun stuff. Yeah, did you tie it to your roof, or how did you go get I it out of the this woods? One, uh, no, this one I, we cut down, and I uh, put it in the back of my truck. Right on. And uh, it, usually it takes a trailer, but we went from a 14-footer down to a 10-and-a-half this year, so we're we're downsizing. Yeah, we uh, had a question uh, about all the charitable causes that uh, NASCAR drivers are involved in, and, and certainly uh, you support animal shelter. Your animal shelter is a big deal to you and the family. Uh, talk a little bit about, if you don't mind, what, what goes on at your animal shelter and what all have you all done? So Rescue Ranch is in Statesville, North Carolina, and we educate kids about animals. So um, the name itself sounds like we're rescuing a bunch of animals, and the, the end result is, yes, we are, but we're doing it through education. Um, we have 80-plus animals that are on, um, on the grounds. We've got 177 acres, 8,000-square-foot um, building, and it's agricultural, domestic, and wild animals that we just use as tools. Uh, most of them are rescued, but tools to educate kids about how to be responsible and respectful to animals. Well, that's, that's an amazing cause, and, and I know your kids are, are all in on that. I, I love the, the work that you do um, and the support you get. I know you and Martin Truex are big buddies. He has his awesome fundraiser as well, and uh, you guys support each other, certainly. Oh, yeah. Well, there's a lot of, lot of great support amongst everybody in the NASCAR industry uh, for each other. Like we were talking about Ray Everham's uh, you know, Ignite program with uh, autism and things like that that he does that uh, – make a big difference in our community and um, we all try to scratch each other's back so to speak to make a difference and um, it just it makes it makes it fun I mean there's there's um, there's a lot of people in the world that um, go through lots of tough things and uh, it's nice for us to be able to help that out and it's nice also at the same time for us to be able to help each other go through that stuff so um, we um, we're proud of what we do with the rescue ranch this 2019 season I thought uh, I thought you performed better better yeah. <laughs> well I, I thought your your performance helped raise that that whole ship and was that your did you feel like you going there you could make a difference like you did or were you just sort of apprehensive i didn't look at it as going there to make a difference i looked at it as going there to meet my goals to win races um and i you know we didn't do that uh we were close you know whatever it was eight inches or whatever in talladega but um we um, we progressed and got better and better in so many ways throughout the season. Um, and we didn't start horrible, but we continued to get better and learned. Um, and it was everything was so new um, as far as people, cars, packages, horsepower, you name it. It was more new this year for me than it was my rookie season. And I think it was almost worse because I had experience. If I would have been a rookie, it would have probably been easier, but I had experience and knowledge of what I've always done and had to undo a few things and try to redo a few things to, uh, to try to be better. And that's, you know, that's what we have to do. Um, it's how we adjust to the racetrack. Like, you know, when the top comes in, you go to the top. When the bottom comes in, you go to the bottom. And when the car changes, you got to adjust. And I think that um, after 19 years, let's say, I had to adjust mm. more than I thought I needed to. <laughs> but um, in the end, we had fun. Um, Scott Graves did a great job on the box. The Picker did an awesome job. Um, we made and built better race cars and faster race cars towards the end of the season, and uh, we have got to continue, continue to not just do that, but to make bigger steps because we didn't do, we still didn't do good enough. Um, you know, we had a great run there at Homestead. I think we finished seventh. Uh, it was a good way to end the season. Um, just got to keep building on that. Yeah, and in, in 2020, with the foundation you built you, your goals are obviously going to be more lofty you want to win obviously but I think that that multiple wins could be something with a new teammate how do you feel about the relationship there as well well it's just um I don't think you can take one person and change an organization and maybe you can say that about what I did this year but I don't I don't look at it that way I look at it as an opportunity with uh, with Chris Boucher and um Luke Lambert to um to grow the chemistry over the organization to um to have better teamwork, to have um, just all around better communication so that we can be better, which makes us faster, which makes us more competitive, which is what the organization's goal is. Um, you know, we want to win. We want to we we finish 1-2. Um, 
and at some point in any order as long as we can do it three or four times yeah but um you know that's that's just it i mean we want to we want to we need to be better if we're not better then we're not doing a good enough job you've been around this room a bit what has is somebody some of the media has anyone asked you a question that made you smile and think yeah, that was special, or, or a moment that you were reminded of the 2019 season. That you're my second stop, so you had a chance, and I didn't. <laughs> you didn't do it. <laughs> I, I, I don't even know why I have this job, Ryan. Let me. I uh, no, I just the um, first person didn't either, though. Right? I honestly, yeah, no, <laughs> and that was the whole group. So that's what I thought. I, I, yeah, I um, I feel like um, just coming back and talking about it is kind of cool because when the checkered flag drops at Homestead, unless you're Kyle Bush and that team. Um, and from my perspective, when we were out of the playoffs, um, it's time to reboot the season. And this is the first step, I guess you could say. It's a small step, but the first step in rebooting the season because we're talking about what happened in 2019, but we're really thinking about what we need to do to beat everybody else in 2020. Right on. So that, 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 makes, that makes me smile. That makes me happy to know that there's a lot of people that think that what we did was good. By my standards, it's not good enough, but I know that I'm capable of more and our team's capable of more. Right on. A uh, couple of questions I've been asking the guys. Did Rick Hendrick ever run as a driver a cup race? I do not know the answer to that. I, to my knowledge, no. Okay, he did in 1987 at Riverside. Was he a starting park? No, he was. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I remember, I, I was in that I'd race. ask him if he was sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> I remember in that race, and everybody remembered in that race, that whatever, whatever Hendrick Motorsports had, they put it under the hood of that thing because yeah. it would motor yeah. down the back straight away. <laughs> so I know he had a fun time. And then the other one is uh, Die Hard, a Christmas movie or not? Die Hard? Mm-hmm. Like with Mel Bruce Gibson? Willis? Bruce Willis? Yeah, it was Mel um, a Christmas movie? No. No, it's not. No. But it's argued on the internet that it is. You know, you can't believe the internet. No, I don't. If you, no. if I were me and I believe the internet, I wouldn't be here. Do you think there's really just one internet? Or is there multiple internets? Because the internet can be right and the internet can be wrong. Is it the same internet? I think it's the same. Well, you think, but do you know? No, I don't know. That's my point. But I think. Does anybody else know? The, the answer's out there. I was going to tell you a quick story. Like, my brother told me when I was a kid, like, don't run 12th. Don't wreck running. Try and run 12th with a 20th place car. And I just felt like, I don't. I know you don't want to hear this compliment, but I just felt like when I looked up, you were running better than I than, than you you had the, the car had you thought been. i was capable of not you yeah <laughs> <laughs> no I, I, and i i've heard that quite a bit this year and that that makes me feel good but it also makes me know we got a lot of work to do because um you know let's just say going into 2020 we don't have a 20th place car anymore we've got a 15th place car because that's where we finished in points <clears throat> if you want to go off of that and we um we need to be even better than that i mean it's it's um it's obvious that, <clears throat> that the joe gibbs cars were we're the strength of our <clears throat> our competition, and um, you know our goal is to not just beat them, but beat everyone. Right on. And I, I wonder for the fans a, a, a bit if if you can describe the difference between a Gibbs car and your car. Like they'll look at them and say they're cars. Like how how are they that much better? What is what have they have? And I know if you do, you do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, it's it's um it's a matter of horsepower. It's a matter of downforce. It's a matter of um, mechanical grip suspension i'm about i mean the only thing the only part of the race car that touches the ground are the tires so how you distribute the load on that on those four tires and how much you stick it with with downforce and then how much you move it forward with horsepower is where it's at now granted there's a driver in there that's running the controls but until you got a table that's got um, equal distribution on four legs one of those legs is going to break when you put the weight on it and um that's what the goal is is to have the best four-legged table and the most downforce and the most power pushing it forward without ripping the legs off of it and uh the, you know the driver's got a lot to do with that no doubt but uh, the team and the organization we've seen you can take the best driver in the world and put him in a bad car and he cannot carry it anymore right there was a day where a driver could carry it farther than you thought it was possible and that's kind of what you said about me this year and i think that was just because of what people thought i had or we had and then obviously it was better than it was mm -hmm. in the past you know 2018 let's say so just um you, know, you you they've got they've got their homework done um but they're you know the sats are over yeah it's time to restudy right on well i appreciate your um your input and your knowledge and and spending time with me you got it and um, i'm glad to give you this big big room i know you 
couple cameras. Are the cameras even on or not? I think, but if you if you touch that microphone, it'll break. I, I was close. Yeah, you did good. Yeah, it's been a great year. So thankful for the stories. So thankful for getting to to learn more about some of my friends. Heck, even my brother told me stories I didn't know about on this podcast. That's why I've loved it so much. Just getting to know people and being a part of their world for an hour or so each week. Thank you so much for watching. We've had a lot of people that have uh, tuned in and checked out our podcast, listened to us via their uh, favorite podcast app, and also uh, checked in on us on the social media platforms that Fox Sports hosts. So it's been a great year. We really want to say thank you to Ford Martin. I want to say also thank you to Neil Foley and, and all the people that are, have helped us with the production of our podcast. Looking forward to 2020, making it even bigger and better and more fun. Thanks again. Talk to you later.